want to use this platform to say that St. James is very much open for business. If you want to join the state's drive to keep economic operations vibrant in the parish, please call 837-8888 or email takeback.stjames at jdf.mil.jm. Hello and welcome to another edition of Jamaica Magazine. I'm Adrian Atkinson, your host for today's show. We have so much in store for you, so please stick around. No one is above the law. We encourage all Jamaicans to join the fight against corruption, organized criminality, these nefarious activities that stymies our country's progress. I want to encourage all Jamaicans to call. We have a secure line, 1-800-CORRUPT. Call anytime and we will treat the information received with the highest standard of confidentiality. We need your help. We want to elicit your support. Call 1-800-CORRUPT. That's 1-800-267-7878. Be the change. Report corruption today. Good day, I'm Stephen McHugh and this is your GIS News for Monday, February 5. Finance Minister Audley Shaw has announced that the country's debt-to-GDP ratio is falling aggressively and is now poised to close the 2017-2018 fiscal year below 105%. This surpasses government's previous target for a reduction in the debt-to-GDP ratio from its current 115% to 108% by the end of March. The minister says it's evidence of the macroeconomic improvements being witnessed in a number of areas. So we are moving in a very aggressive way to deal with all of these fundamental issues that collectively militate against uh, consumer and business confidence and investment. At the same time, we have to make sure that we, we do the necessary things to make our country more appropriately aligned with global standards. Minister Shaw was speaking at a recent signing ceremony for 9.17 million euros in grant funding under the European Union Caribbean Investment Facility for the government's energy management and efficiency project. He also praised the recent news that Jamaica's rating has been upgraded from stable to positive by international rating agency Fitch. The news was also welcomed by IDB General Manager for the Caribbean Group Country Department, Therese Turner-Jones. It really stresses how far Jamaica has come on reducing its debt and improving the macroeconomic outlook. So I, um, I think the future is bright. Prime Minister Andrew Holness says the second phase of the state of public emergency in St. James will target more heavily the facilitators of crime. He says this is a shift in focus from the initial phase, which looked more at street-level crime. The street-level criminal is just the symptom of a deeper problem. There is literally an ecosystem of criminality that is growing in St. James. It's driven by lottery scamming and other such economic crimes. It is facilitated by formal systems, our formal banking system, or formal telecommunication system, or formal transportation systems, our medical systems. If we are going to really bring this crime problem to heel, then we must deal with the hierarchy of criminality. Mr. Holness was addressing the annual awards banquet of the St. James Chapter of the Lay Magistrates Association of Jamaica. The Ministry of Justice is reporting success in its recent Trafficking in Persons public education and sensitization campaign with keen interest being shown by young persons who are more vulnerable to the crime. Manager of the Trafficking in Persons Secretariat at the Ministry, Keisha West, says it's an initiative that government will be continuing. And as we continue, we want persons to be engaged and come on board. This issue will not go away. Um, we have a right 
to liberty. We have a right to the security of the person. It's a constitutionally guaranteed right. And it is very important that persons are aware that human trafficking violates, it infringes on this constitutional right. The Justice Ministry recently embarked on a four-day island-wide tour to increase public awareness of the signs and impact of trafficking in persons. 213 households in Portland and St. Mary have received grant funding from the government to support their recovery from damage sustained in heavy rains and flooding in January. The relief funds were handed out by Minister of Labor and Social Security Shahini Robinson on Friday. Speaking to beneficiaries at the ministry's parish office in Port Antonio, Minister Robinson called for wise use of the funds. Use it to build back some sort of normalcy to your lives. Minister Robinson says government is committed to help those affected, which includes five St. Mary households that were totally destroyed. Relief supplies including bedding, food, toiletries, etc. have been distributed by the Ministry of Labor and Social Security to affected households and to those persons who are in shelters. So the Ministry of Labor and Social Security understands your needs and we have responded. Minister Robinson also urged the residents to be alert as the rains continue. And finally, the Agriculture Ministry's Veterinary Services Diagnostic Laboratory, VSDL, has received official 17025 Certificate of Accreditation from the Jamaica National Agency for Accreditation. The accreditation, which is of international standard, strengthens Jamaica's credibility and integrity of work coming out of the laboratory. Portfolio Minister Carl Samuda says this is essential if the country is to compete effectively in the global market. We must be tireless in our pursuit of excellence because the world owes us nothing. We are not going to make it as a nation to grow and to, and to continue to grow and be respected unless we can say to the world the products coming out of our country are first rate world standard, not to be questioned. And that's it for JIS News Today. I'm Stephen McHugh. Thanks for watching. If the call centers in Jamaica have to shut down, you know how many people would lose them work? Thousands. If the tourists stop come to Jamaica, you know how many people would have suffer? Hundreds of thousands. People. Don't skin up with no scammer. Don't take them blood money. It is killing Jamaica. Help put them away. Silence brings violence. A message from the Ministry of National Security. The Ministry of National Security has committed its officers to positively impacting the lives of juveniles who come in contact with the law and is following through on that commitment. A program has been formulated to promote behavioral change and it's aptly named We Transform. A key component is the focus on healthy lifestyle, which is being facilitated through a series of health fairs across all four juvenile correctional institutions. The health fair services are offered to both wards and staff members of the facilities. The first was held on November 8, 2017 at the Metcalf Street facility with persons receiving blood pressure checks, dental care, eye screening, electrocardiogram tests and cholesterol tests. What we intend to be the outcomes of this pillar, healthy lifestyle for the We Transform program, is to advance the general health of our children and staff members within the Department of Correctional Services across the juvenile institutions. We intend for healthy lifestyle practices to be promoted and practiced. The health fairs will benefit a combined 530 children and staff from Metcalf Street Secure Juvenile Remand Center and the South Camp Juvenile Remand and Correctional Center in Kingston, Hilltop Juvenile Correctional Center in St. Anne, and the Rio Cobra Juvenile Correctional Center in St. Catherine. The health fairs will also address sexuality and reproduction and substance abuse and misuse. Those who abuse or misuse substances, drugs, alcohol, it affects their behavior. It affects their decision making. We intend for the children and the staff to be equipped with the requisite knowledge and tools to abstain from the use of illicit drugs 
and unhealthy and inappropriate sexual practices. Partners such as the Ministry of Health and the Chase Fund welcome the initiative. We at the Ministry commit to partner and support in whatever way we can to make this program successful. This health fair here is part of a healthy lifestyle initiative that can make a tremendous difference to the way the wards here live. I have one suggestion about something that we could add and it is blood sugar tests. The juvenile diabetes is something that is getting really, really prevalent. And if you look at both rates, the incidence and prevalence rates, it, they, 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 are, they are alarming. And so if we could add that going forward, it may just discover some things that we need to know. This drive to promote healthy lifestyle practices in juvenile centers supports other initiatives, such as reducing offending and reoffending through behavior modification intervention, building self-esteem to engender positive behavior and attitude between staff and inmates, and strengthening the capacity of staff through training. The overall aim of the We Transform program is to equip children ages 12 to 17 years under the care and supervision of the Department of Correctional Services with the requisite skill set, character and support to become exemplary citizens. The program is also geared at empowering youth for sustainable reintegration into society. My goal is to make sure that the Department of Correctional Services achieves success, raises the bar, raises the standard and quality of service that we are giving to our children because it is one of the significant pillars in our general national five pillar strategy to create a safe and secure Jamaica. We must reduce reoffending. Investment in prevention is better than investing in responding to crime. I said, be careful what you teach your little children. Make sure I know something to hurt them. Mind what you're saying to my sister. She could be the next prime minister. Children in Jamaica constitute anyone who is under the age of 18 years. And so once you have a child who is under your care and supervision, we encourage you at the Office of the Children's Advocate to always know where your children are. It doesn't mean that you have to be there with them, but you certainly know who they're with, where they're going, and the purpose for being there. This is a key component in helping to establish some rules in terms of some ground rules and helping to guide your children towards responsible and sensible choices and also assisting you if something were to go wrong to know what is the first point of contact to assist your child. While you're not to look at everybody as a potential suspect, that you need to be very wary of adults, whether they're in positions of authority or not, that seek to want to have a very close relationship with your child. Somebody who wants to invite your child on an outing and it's just that adult and your child alone. Somebody who wants to take your child to a very special event to reward the child perhaps for some performance that the child would have done in an extracurricular activity or for academic uh, excellence. We encourage you to look at these situations very carefully and to determine whether or not it's an appropriate meeting or outing that this person is propositioning for your child. If you are enrolling your child in a daycare, ensure that you know something about the track record of that daycare. Ensure that the daycare has what we call an open door policy, which allows you to go in, see what's happening, observe how the workers there interact with the children, and know some of the ground rules that guide these interactions. If they're going on outings, whether it be school trips or otherwise, ensure that at some point, if, even if you can't go to all, you do attend some of them. So you get yourself integrated into the system and the culture of the school. For these tips and of course any other information that deals with children, that is anyone under 18 years, please feel free to contact the Office of the Children's Advocate we're at 72 Harbour Street, downtown Kingston, and our numbers are 948-1134 or 
Our website, www.oca.gov.jn. Watch what you teach your little children. Make sure I know something to hurt them. Mind what you're saying to me, sister. Cause she could be the next prime minister. Oh, God. I really wish I could retire right now. High time I start my own business. Well, honey, don't you think you should apply to the early retirement program? Look how long we have to about that. You know you're right. The service for eligible government employees between 50 and 59 years old. Speak with your HR department or see the press for details. Deadline is February 16. Apply now. Tomorrow, February 6, we celebrate the 73rd anniversary of the birth of one of our nation's finest sons, the Honorable Robert Nestor Marley. The museum created in his honor at 56 Hope Road will be having a packed schedule of events beginning at 7 in the morning and culminating at 10 in the night. Being held under the theme Soul Rebel, Tuesday's function will serve as the launch of activities that will run throughout February. In the morning, a Soul Rebel Young Talent Exposé will be held, showcasing 12 items from school-aged performers. The morning will also see the staging of a youth symposium dubbed Junior's Jam Session. By the afternoon, another symposium will be held, followed by an open mic and reggae jam session featuring musical tributes. And in the evening, there will be a stage show featuring performances from the Marley family and guests. If you have some time, be sure to make your way to the Bob Marley Museum and celebrate the gong. Don't make diseases spread. Wash your hands with soap and water instead. Wash them regular or use a hand sanitizer. Make sure the germs them dead. Touching your eyes or your mouth or your nose. Wash your hands before you do things like those. After you use the bathroom before preparing food, come on, wash your hands them clean. <laughs> Whether you drive on two wheels or four, there's one thing I can guarantee you. That is that you know someone that's gonna need blood one day or you might just be that someone. So here's the deal. The blood we have can only supply about 50% of the need. That's why with the craziness that's happening on the roads, we need you to join the One Love, One Blood campaign. A life you save just might be your own. God knows how much I've tried The fruit I cannot hide To keep you satisfied True love I now exist Is the love I can't resist So jump by my side Ooh, yeah. February is the month we use to highlight One of our greatest musical creations Reggae Let's take a look at the evolution of one of Jamaica's Indigenous cultural art forms Relax, man, we'll soon get there. In fact, we are here, the Institute of Jamaica. This is where we're going. What, what is this, Grandpa? When you go in, you'll see. Come on, let's go. Oh, here's a camera someplace, so me no want to go. You say you me want no to like. be a musician? Well, you have to come here. Let me show you where the music is coming from. Step inside. See, this is where I wanted to come. You see how far Jamaican music coming from, Kadeem? These are Tainas, the first people, and see, they're playing drums and dancing. And look at these African instruments. That's when the first Africans came to Jamaica. Now, I bet you don't know what this instrument is. Rumba box. It is a rumba box. And you hear that in what kind of music now? Mento. Mento. That's what makes the mento music so sweet. Now, look at this. This is jazz music. Jamaica had a rich tradition of jazz. right out of Alpha Boys School, you see it? Right after jazz, the same jazz musicians were playing r and B. I found my thrill. That came from America. 
And when the R&B dried up from America, then they started making Jamaican R&B. the R&B around and made their own Jamaican style of R&B music, which then led to ska. It was the beginning of independence. Ska was looked upon as the new sound of Jamaica. Oh, we finding our own identity, not following the American R&B or the ballad or the middle of the road kind of music that was coming from North America and Europe. And so it was very nationalist in its, in its, in its, in its out, outlook and output. Together, together, be brothers and sisters, we're defending. Giant and stuff and still bring stories to death. Seems like the music always speak about social issues. A lot of the music is about social issues. After all, life is music and music is life. After ska, you got Rocksteady. Rocksteady, the rhythm, the ska still continue, but the bass rock and the, the guitar and the, the piano. Ska same way, but the bass, the emphasis on the bass. So yeah, fall back on you. Yeah. Well, it look as if we can hear music here. I like this grandpa. It this is nice. rock steady. No, you should have seen me and your grandmother in those days. <laughs> Rocking steady. <laughs> yeah, grandpa. <Yes. laughs> That's Alton Ellis, you know. Yeah. Great rock steady singer. But we turn down the people to the and next thing, they throw us out of here. <laughs> and go back to watch this thing. But grandpa. You've been talking about Jamaican music for all long now, and until now, I haven't heard anything about reggae. Well, we're coming right up to reggae now. Here we are, reggae. Well, first of all, many people say that reggae was born at Sir Coxon's Studio One on Brentford Road. Clement Dad brought a piece of machinery to the studio for about a year. It was sitting there, and no one, no one knew exactly what to do with it. And so they hooked, hooked it up one day and decided to implement it. And they discovered it was a tape delay. And so they hooked it into the machine and they started doing it into the recording. So when they put the guitar sound through the tape delay, it comes back saying, cha -cha, cha -cha, cha -cha. The rest of studios here in this recording out there thought it was the guitar making that and just copied that and that was the birth of reggae music. Here are some of the great artists who came out of that. Bob Marley, Peter Tosh and Bonnie Livingston, The Wailers, Burning Spear and so on. Now, Reggae was also a way of life. It was the greatest advertisement for Rastafari. I think it's my time to teach you a what little you, bit. What can you teach me? <laughs> Come right here, sir. Oh, dance hall. <laughs> I know that's when you were going to get up here. It was just a little bit different in the 80s where you have more artists that come and you have to compete with artists like every day and the dance hall vibes, when you go into the dance hall you know you have to just hold the mic to get a bus 
and now it's different you just have a cd you go to the radio station and get some your play yeah. the 90s had these persons like Beanie Man, Lady Saw, and Bounty Killer. Okay. Up to today, Beanie Man and Bounty Killer still have swag. Right now, we have producers that are artists, artists that are producers, and radio jacks who are doing both. With technology, the music is now diverse. We are accepting a music on a, on a broader scale. One time gone till you want to hear hip hop music or techno music being played in, in a dance hall setting. And that is happening right now. A lot of pop music is being accepted. Um, disco music, techno music, electro house music is being accepted right now. Hip hop music is widely accepted right now. So we as Jamaican, we are listening to a, a, a wide cross section of music. That means that we took music and turn it into Jamaican music and we have given it back to the world and everything has now come together. Kadim, the tour is done. See, it wasn't that bad after all. For real grandpa, really inspired by all of this. Well, out of many, we're really one music. And you might yet become a good musician. Thanks grandpa, yes. And if that's our show, be sure to keep the link. Email us, jamaicamagazine at jis.gov.jm. Visit our website, jis.gov.jm, and join us on social media. There's YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. On behalf of the entire team here at the JIS, I'm Adrian Atkinson. Do take care. This has been a production of the Jamaica Information Service. The Voice of Jamaica.